Come with me and you'll be in a world of climbing violations. Hello, boys and girls. Today, I'm basically going to be picking on one guy because he's got four fail videos that a guy sent me and said that you got to check these out. So I'm going to try to throw in some extra ones. we got an exciting episode today and we should learn a lot from these episodes. Welcome to Climbing Fails, by the way, where we break down people's climbing fails so we don't have the booby Boo boo boobies. <laughs> boo boo ouchies next times. Next times. <laughs> okay, let's hop right into it and see if we can break down and see where this guy messes up here. Um, it looks like what he's doing is he's building an anchor system to bring up a second to do some kind of multi pitch practice. Like if there was another pitch up there, so he'd have to be there, bring up his second, and then do another pitch of climbing. So I guess he's doing some practice here. Um, it's probably better to practice on the ground first off. Oh, let me pause this right here and just say something. So he's building his anchor just straight out of quick draws. Um, some people, that's fine. People say it's fine. Some people say it's not. I don't really like making my, my anchors out of quick draws. Uh, one of the issues that does happen, believe it or not, is people that maybe get into this unclipping mindset and they're unclipping quick draws as they go up. And then they get to the anchor and they think it's just another quick draw they have to unclip. And then before you know it, they've unclipped everything and then they fall to the ground. I mean, people don't clip and they climb auto blaze, stuff like that happens. So you have to like put things into the system to make things kind of dummy proof sometimes. So I'd recommend having some kind of locking device in an anchor just to break that train of thought. Just something to think about. Uh, so right here, it looks like he's okay. He's on belay. And now he's going to try to tie him with a clove hitch. Okay, everybody's done, everybody's done this at least once where they just like fumble the clove hitch a bunch of times, right? I mean, you got to start somewhere. It looks like this is going to be a while. <laughs> All right, I'm going to fast forward this for sake of time. It looks like he's trying to figure out how to tie clove hitch. All right, cool. Now you can completely get off. Okay. I'm he very says, secure. Okay, cool. Completely take me off. I'm very secure. No, you're not. So he's about to get off of put off a of belay. Right now he's in both pieces. He's in the left ball. He's in the right ball when he's on belay. Now that he's off belay, he's got his pass, which is this orange device uh, with the rope and this beaner. That beaner is not the best type of beaner to use as a pass. The, a, a, that's a pear-shaped beaner. A oval-shaped beaner clips in better. He's also got the gate pressing up against the rock, which is not optimal. It kind of, that, so the rock is pushing on the gate. Uh, and now the big deal is he's on one piece. He's just on the left ball. Will that ball blow? I don't know. Uh, it probably shouldn't, but... That is a huge no-no, very, very big no-no. That kills people, so don't, he failed. Definitely fail. So as you can see now, he's clearly just onto one bolt. Cool, all right. Not cool. Okay, now he's putting a locker in here. I, I think he's playing on bringing up his second on that anchor. Right now, right now, he's technically onto two bolts. However, I wouldn't trust that system the way that's put there because if that bolt does blow to the left, he's taking a fall. Fact, is he taking a factor two fall on the quick draw? The quick draw has got to fall once and then twice, right? But he's got to pass. He's into the pass, he's in the rope, which has some absorption. But the fact that he's got all these hard points, if that ball did blow, we may have something funky happen and he'd hit the ground. So still technically, but not technically into two points. Okay, so this is a pivot. That's what the, this device is called. And I avoid these ATC devices, like the plague. I would rather use a Grigri. All right, cool. So now, check it out. I'm gonna start pulling the, the rope, okay? You just lower on, on a on a munter. 
So now he's got to pull in all the slack. He was about to put him on belay, but they realized I have all this rope I got to pull through. So now he's pulling all this rope through. Okay, so now he decides maybe I should make this more redundant. <laughs> so so he, he clips that into that. I still don't like that. The way I would do it is I would have my pass on one side and then you would clove hitch into the other bolt. So you have a pass on one side and clove on the other. That would have been that, that would have been more redundant. All right, you get to climb. Okay, he's finally got all the rope up and now he's ready to bring up his second. Let's see his technique here. Okay, so you can already see he's taking it, he's kind of taking his hand off of the belay rope already. Oh, I love this shit. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Hand off the belay rope, hand off the belay rope. Now, um, this device that he's using in guide mode here, it does lock up when the climber falls. So his hand is, your hand's always supposed to be in the brake line, don't get me wrong. But if the climber falls, it should catch him. But this is definitely a no-no. You don't take your hand off like this. If you, if you need to get your hands off, what you use is called a third hand, which is a prusik. You can use a jammy, a hollow block, something like that, to hold the rope below his hand so that you know anything crazy happens, he needs to get his hands off, do some other work, you put a third hand on there, and then you can, get, you can go hands free. Or if you have to, you tie a catastrophe knot, big, which is just a big knot in the rope that would get sucked all the way up into the device and then it wouldn't be able to go through the device. So you put a knot on that side. That's that's two things you could do. And maybe we'll bring that stuff up later again. There's two things you could do so that you don't this have a epic fail. Fuck. It's incredible, bro. See, see as it gets up here. Love this shit. Okay, he, he pretty much say, gets dude. the climber up without there. incident. You take. That's it, dude. And now it's time to lower. Now, That's how you multi-pitch, bro. This pivot, oh, I do I love say, more specifically, are finicky when it comes to lowering. It's probably easier to just put the guy on a munter and send him down. But we'll see the what, 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 what trials and tribulations our friend goes through here. You can tell he loves the sport, he loves the gear, but you need... You need a lot more trading and guidance before you put people's lives on the line. But, okay, no hand on the brake line. No hand on the brake line. About to yank. Oh, there you go. At that point, <laughs> what are you doing, guy? Now he's got his hand on the brake line. Pretty scary. Yeah, don't drop me. Okay, so you can see this is pretty finicky. Um, Cody, if you don't, if you know who Cody is, it's, uh, he was an Instagram uh, content creator for for like guide uh, techniques and things. I'm gonna have to insert a clip right here of how you would properly unjam this thing and have a more controlled lower. Like I said, I'd probably get the guy in the munter, but I like Cody's techniques. So here's a clip of Cody. When lowering a climber with the load strand direct, generally the climber needs to be able to unweight the rope. However, they're not always able to do that. So one thing that we can do is simply clip our carabiner just like we would with the load strand direct through the master point, but this time go up through a redirect through a point on our anchor and then back down to our belay loop with a proper third hand on, I can now lean back on this and that will begin to 
unload the device and I can safely lower my climber to the ground. <laughs> so thankfully it gets our guy to the ground in one piece. Uh, if you checked out this guy's video, maybe I'll link it down in the description below, in the comment section, you know, everyone's telling this guy, you know, seek some guidance and this and that. Kudos to this guy for leaving it up. But if you're not going to take somebody's advice, well, there's only one way I know how to deal with people like that. Oompa, loompa, doopa dee doo. I've got a perfect puzzle for you. Oompa, loompa, doopa dee dee. If you were wise, you would listen to me. What do you get when you clip into one point? Climbing like you just smoked a joint. What are you at? Not protecting you, brat. What do you think will come of that? I don't like the look of it. Oompa, loompa, doompa dee da. If you're not stupid, you will go far. You will climb in happiness too. Like the oompa, loompa, doompa dee do. But wait, there's more. Let's check out what happens here. Another one of his adventures. is isn't directly into his harness with a locker. It's extended with this quick draw you see here. Hopefully it's locking on both sides. Let's play and see how he goes about this. So he's looking over the edge. We, he's got some friends down below. Okay, so he's asking for a fireman's belay. A fireman's belay is a fireman's belay is okay. A fireman's belay is when you're when you have a friend down there and they're holding the brake line down there at, on the ground. So you could stop somebody's fall if they're coming down on an ATC by holding the line and pulling it taut. Um, let's see how that goes. So he clipped he clipped his pass in right now. So far, so good. I mean, not exactly how I would do it. I have a pass as well. A pass stands for a personal anchor system. That's, just, that's that little orange clip again. He's checking out his gear as he goes over. Nice big buckets. Having a little bit of a hard time with some heavy breathing. He's a little bit scared at the top. I guess you should always be a little bit worried when you're facing uh, gravity, but right now he's like completely he's bomber right now. Right now he's all right. Besides the fact that he's got somebody on a fireman's belay, which it sounded a little bit to me like he had to explain what a fireman's belay is. So is he really on belay? Is the guy holding just one side of the rope? For it to be effective, he's got to hold both sides, the left and the right strand. Is he doing that? I don't know. Okay, what's going on here? Okay, bam. Right now, for all intents and purposes, he's failed because he just unclipped. So if he falls now, is his, guy, is his friend holding the rope correctly? Who knows? So definitely could die right now. And now he's clipped in. And just flipping that over was completely unnecessary. Okay, what would I have done? I like to just tie a big catastrophe knot, okay, you tie a slip knot onto the ATC, and then you tie another overhand, so that thing's not going anywhere. And then you go over the edge, and then you take that off while your hand's on the brake line, and you go down. This guy doesn't use any third hands, doesn't use any catastrophe knots, so that should be something you should definitely use. And like I said, switching that being around like that, completely unnecessary. Let's see how he goes to the rest of this, because we got a lot to cover. Okay, so he eventually does add a third hand. Probably you could have added that when you were before you were over the edge. Okay, now he's gonna. Now he should be able to go down. That's, it's taking a long time to do that. Checking everything, double checking. Nothing wrong with that. Triple checking. Quadruple checking. 
Okay, finally ready to go down. And it gets to the bottom without incident. So a little bit sloppy there. Some food for thought for you if you decide to try something like that. Let's see what else we got. We once again find ourselves back at the anchors. So how is he going to negotiate this one? Let's see. Um, okay, he's on belay. Now, right now he's clipped into two points. So... So I think you took him off belay. So now that he's off belay, guess what? You're clipped into one point now. So that ball blows, you're dead. So you failed. Now, <laughs> already failed. You got, he's got the gate once again up, pressed up against the rock. The nice thing about that particular locker is you'll see the red line on it, which lets you know if it's unlocked. It's a screw gate. I like spring-loaded gates. That's my that's my preference because I want a locker to kind of always be a locker. But the nice thing about a screw gate is it could be a locker if it's unscrewed. It could not be if it's not. So preferences. Also, mine get my screw gates get pretty dirty from my sprat work. So when a lot of dirt gets in those lockers, they kind of tend not to screw very well. I mean, run into the same problems with spring-loaded too. You got climbers to the right of you. Okay, so he's untying that knot. He, yeah, he's on one piece. Okay, so what what is he planning on doing right now? I'm thinking he's got a, the knot, he's got the rope tied to his harness so that he doesn't drop the rope. It looks like he's gonna be cleaning this pitch, taking all his gear out and then coming down and unclipping everything or maybe setting up some kind of top rope. But if he's setting up a top rope, it looks like he'll be running it through the chains, which, Ethically, you're not supposed to be doing that, especially in certain areas because it ruins out the hardware. Having your ropes, everybody if everybody's ropes ran through the chains, then you wear out those chains really quickly and maybe setting up dangerous uh, anchors for other people because you can end up turning the anchors into sh having sharp edges, especially if they're worn down really bad. So you always want to check the anchors, make sure they're not worn out too much, don't have any sharp edges. That bolt blows, you're gone. I don't know how he doesn't realize that. The guy, if I was the guy next to him, I'd say, hey, you know, you have to be able to, the hard thing about, about it, oh, it looks like you got the knot on the wrong side there. Get it over through there. The hard thing is you gotta be able to speak up and, and, and you gotta be able to take criticism and give criticism correctly, it's it's hard. It's hard to get through to people sometimes. What's this, a stop or not? Oh, okay, he's tying a stop or not. But he's already got an eight above that already. So now he's got two stop or nots. Okay. Yeah, you gotta be able to, it's hard to talk to people correctly. Sometimes it's easier to yell at somebody, but and then later on they'll be thinking about it and maybe correct their ways. Like this guy's probably, He's gonna repel. Oh, so yeah, now now he's dead. Okay, so now he's completely off belay. So now he's on one point. I mean, he was still on one point before. So, because clipping in, clipping a rope into your gear loops on the side of your harness, those aren't rated for falls. Those are just yank right off. I cannot climb in a watch. I don't know how people climb watches on, but I don't wear a watch anyway. So I think watches are pretty outdated. I just pull my phone out and look at the time, but whatever. Some people are into watches. Okay, so let me fast forward this. He's pulling out ATC. Okay, so he's adding a third hand. As you can see, he put the third hand, the Prusik on really unwell. So, 
you want to hold that double fisherman's and not and you want that closer to your beaner than being kind of within this loop here because that just messes everything up it's like will the third hand even hold with it with with that knot stopping it from being able to get tight yeah that's a really sloppy third hand maybe i'll fix it at least test it well, like kind of a yeah that's kind of poor he has it extended he's got his he's got his rappel extended this having your rappel extended with an atc like that is so that you can add the third hand and then the if you had the atc onto his harness like with just one beaner then you'd have to have the third hand lower you know because otherwise the prusik would butt up against the atc and it wouldn't work by extending the atc up higher he can now have that third hand and it'll, it should work. Okay, so now he's having some hard time. He should be, okay, so he's having a hard time because he's not weighting his ATC or his third hand. So he just keeps hiking. He keeps hiking the ATC up higher and higher. And now he just pulled up, he just pulled his, his pass up higher. So he's got to get the weight off his pass and onto the ATC. So all he has to really do here is kind of just stand up or lower lower the pass into the ATC or just stand up, unclip the ATC. I mean, it is kind of on a ledge. Yeah, stand up, unclip the pass, and then wait the ATC. But now he's having some, he's having some trouble here. This is hard to watch. I'm going to have to fast forward this. Okay, he eventually gets it and he's coming down. And as you can see, he's got the he's got the the pitch hasn't been cleaned, so it's got all the quick draws still in it. So if he was asking for a fireman's belay earlier, then it potentially wouldn't work because he's got the ropes uneven. So I don't I've never I don't think I've ever asked anybody to give me a fireman's belay. I try to be self-reliant. The less you rely on other people with your safety <laughs> the better you're responsible for your own safety so you know they even I, I try to double and triple check everything when I'm at the anchors it looks like he's learning how to use this whole thing so I mean not really not really why where you want to practice okay so I'm I'm done I'm, I'm over this guy <laughs> I'm over this guy. Let's see what else is going on in the world here. Seek some guidance. Start low and slow and get everything down. Get the fundamentals down before you go out there and put other people's lives at risk. Some people, they'd see stuff like that and they literally just either walk away and not want to associate with you and just get far, far away from what you're doing or they might speak up and yell at you. Woo, that's a whipper. Okay, so I'd say this stance right here, very strange. Like if she was, it looks like that's a ledge she could just be standing on, but she's like leaning very strange. The rope is between her legs. She hits the ledge, comes flying down. If she didn't have a helmet on, it'd be bad. Let's check out the Blair. Peace pops out. What's going on? Let's check his brake line. Doesn't expect the fault. Not even watching. Not even looking up. Not completely unexpected fall. Wasn't ready. It's almost like he's belaying, like thinking, th like belaying on that. <laughs> you may as well, at that point, you may as well just be having a tree belay you. He's standing pretty far away to the left, which may be a good thing because you don't want any rocks to pop out, pop, hit you. So you kind of, you may want to be standing somewhere where you could A, watch your climber, which he's not, or B, be able to jump out of the way. But you can see by standing that far away, the first piece blows out. Which isn't the end of the world because, you know, they got a lot of pieces above her, so. Maybe it's, maybe it's, 
at the beginning of the climb, he's standing closer, and then later it stands away, but either way you can see that, that angle pops that piece out. And he doesn't have his helmet strapped on, so that goes flying off his head. Good thing she had a helmet on. This guy on the left doesn't have his helmet on, so especially if you're climbing around other people, you don't know their skill level, you don't know what they'll drop, put a helmet on. You might think you're safe, but you know. Where else are you going to get content like this? Like, comment, subscribe, join the Discord community, and I'll see you in next week's episode. Check out the merch store too while you're at it. Josh Perry, climbing out of here. Woo! Come on, dude, come on. Come on, you got it. Top the chas pile. Let's go. Yeah, almost there. Ooh, that one looks loose. That one looks loose. Come on. Yes, almost there. Oh, that's it. Throw the heel hook. Come on. Oh, man. Oh, damn it.